help you with the question. Good morning to all of you who have just joined our webinar, Efficient Use of Selection Tools in Altium Designer. I just started broadcasting, so some people are still joining, so I'll give everybody a minute or two to join here. And while people are joining, I'll just give you a little bit of background information and introduce myself. My name is Nathaniel Pierce. I'm an Altium designer instructor. I've been working with Altium for many years, and it's my pleasure to bring to you today this webinar, Efficient Use of Selection Tools in Altium Designer. Now we're gonna be focusing uh, 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 most of our um, webinar in the PCB editor area, but while you folks are joining, I'd just like to uh, let you know, if you have questions about the webinar and selection tools in Altium Designer, please present your questions in the question and answer panel. If you're having any difficulty logging in to the audio portion of the webinar or any other logistics of the webinar, please use the chat window. One of my colleagues, David, is gonna be helping me uh, answer questions in the Q&A window and also helping resolve any connection problems that you may have uh, in the chat window, okay? Also, just to let everybody know, if you've registered for this webinar, you will be sent a recording of this webinar uh, with a YouTube link. After this webinar is concluded, we'll be uh, publishing this webinar on YouTube for all of you users out there. So it looks like we have uh, quite a few attendees out there. So let's start the webinar, okay? All right, so it's all about efficient use of selection tools in Altium Designer, right? Okay, so let's take a look at what our agenda is here. Of course, we're gonna be selecting objects, right? Okay, so we have a few options. We can select objects in workspace panels, or we can select objects in the main workspace, also called the main editing area, okay? So when we select objects and panels, we've got a few options. We can use the properties panel, and that employs a, a, a combination, in fact, of the pre-selection filter and post-selection filter, right? So that we can scope out what objects we wanna select in the main editing area. So you can use the properties panel in conjunction with selecting objects in the main editing area. Also, you'll see that we can select objects in the PCB panel, as well as the PCB filter panel and the PCB list panel, okay? So we have a few different selection objects and panels, as well as the main workspace. And we'll see that we can right click on any objects and open up a little dialog box called find similar objects. Alternatively, we can manually select objects in the main editing area just by pressing shift and then left clicking. All right, there's another option as well. The active bar presents a selection, a pre-selection filter that works in tandem with the properties panel. And then there's a press S for selection menu as well, okay? So let's talk about PCB editor panel selection briefly at a high level. I'll introduce the properties panel and how we can use the pre-selection filter, right, to scope out what objects we're gonna select in the main editing area. But really, I think the best option for selecting objects in the PCB editor is using the PCB panel, okay? Because as you'll see, the, the main workspace can be uh, very uh, densely populated, so it can be difficult to select objects in the main editing area. Alternatively, we can use the PCB filter panel to select or highlight any objects as well, and also create a rule uh, for those selected objects. Also the PCB list panel, right? It's a really big panel with many columns. So it's most effectively displayed horizontally or a lot of people like to pull it over on another monitor entirely because it's a pretty big panel. Our main workspace selection options 
allow us to just press S for select. That's the same as going to the menu bar under edit select and you'll have a large selection menu option and we'll take a look at a bunch of these different options as well. Alternatively, all right, we have uh, find similar objects that you can right click in the main editing area to select those, okay? Question came in, hey, is there a PCB inspector like I was familiar with in Altium Designer 17? You know what, the PCB inspector panel, no, it used to be a, a panel called PCB inspector. Now it's no longer there, it's just the properties panel. Whatever objects you select will be loaded into the properties panel, okay? Good questions out there, okay? So please, thank you for keeping your questions in the question and answer uh, window. And please just use the chat window in case you're having any problems uh, getting the audio portion or anything in the webinar. So why do we select objects, right? Well, it's to edit them or, or just to view them, okay? So we have a few different options to select them, but typically when we're gonna be editing them after they're selected, we can gl globally edit a group of selected objects in the properties panel, or we can select and edit them alternatively right in the list panel, okay? Okay, folks, now it's time for my demonstration in here, okay? So let's get right into Altium Designer. All right, but before I start showing you how to select some of these objects, you know what? We have a few poll questions that I'd like to present to some of you folks. We have four poll questions throughout the webinar. All right, now I'm gonna launch the first question here. How often do you have a question about how to use a particular selection tool? All right, so now you should see that this uh, poll question is presented for you. And if you could, please vote on this poll question. And I'll give you guys just a minute or so to do that, please, okay? And again, the question is, how often do you have a question about how to use a particular selection tool, okay? So it looks like a, a lot of folks have voted in here. It's pretty split between questions arise often and questions are pretty rare, okay? So I'm gonna end polling on that question and move along with the, di with the uh, um, demonstration in here, okay? So everybody's seeing my screen back in here. So now I'm in the, the PCB editor, okay? And now you can see, and this, this is a real working uh, PCB project, by the way. This is an Altium project called uh, DT01. I've just renamed it my DT01 because I've made a few uh, modifications here. DT means developer tool, 01. This is a real Altium product, okay? Here's the PCB. And if I click once in the main editing area and I hit control tab, I'll cycle through the open documents in the documents bar. And now you can see why our focus of this webinar is gonna be selecting objects in the PCB editor. Because selecting objects in the schematic editor is a breeze because everything is wide open, okay? It's in the PCB editor when things are a little bit more densely populated, okay? Now this is, this is you know, you'll see very clearly why it's harder to select objects in the main editing area, that's for sure. Also called the main workspace, okay? All right, so again, we have selection tools that both exist in panels and the main workspace, and there's kind of a hybrid. Look at this. Now I'm gonna first open up the properties panel, and at first what we're gonna do, folks, we're gonna take a look at how we use different panels to select objects. All right, now this properties panel, right, when there's nothing selected, it shows all sorts of information just about the board, okay? All right, so let's take a look uh, here at this. This is called the pre-selection filter when nothing's selected in the properties panel. All right, you'll see this is the pre-selection filter and in the upper right, this is the post-selection filter. So this pre-selection filter helps us scope out areas for selection in the main editing area. So it's a combination. Watch this, I'll demonstrate. Look at this, in the pre-selection filter, I'm gonna turn everything off. That means I couldn't select anything in the main editing area if I want to until I turn something on here like vias, okay? 
So once I select this vias option, what that means is now that my selection options are scoped just to vias. So if I go into the menu bar under edit, select, look at this, I see this big selection sub menu, right? Well, in fact, the select menu is used so often, it's got its own shortcut key. So in the main editing area, I just hit S for select and I see all of these options in here, okay? Let's check this out. Select, lasso, select. I've been having a lot of fun with this lately, okay? So watch this. I'm just gonna zoom into the main editing area. I'm just using control, right mouse button and I push my mouse forward or back and it, my cursor turns into a little magnifying glass. So I hit S for select, lasso select, check it out. My cursor turns to a crosshair and I'm expected to just draw out an area around the objects that I want to select. Now I've just scoped out vias, so I just drew this lasso select around it. And look at this, now in the properties panel, it says via because I've just selected those vias. And at the bottom of the properties panel, look, it tells me how many vias are selected, 29. So I just selected all of those shielding vias around that diff pair. All right, and now I could edit them all at once in the properties panel if I wanted to, or I could just view their properties. If I right click in the main editing area, clear filter, check it out, the shortcut key is shift C, and now back in the properties panel, nothing is selected and I just see the board area up in there, okay? So the properties panel pre-selection filter allows you to scope the objects for selection in the main editing area. So the properties panel is sort of like a combination of selecting objects in the, pro in, in the panel and then it's using those scope selections for the main editing area. Now the post selection filter works a little bit differently. All right, now check this out. Now, if I just hit S for select lasso, so, uh, let me clear filter first, and I hit S for select lasso select again, and now with everything selected in the pre-selection filter, if I draw a lasso around those same vias, let's see what we've got here. Okay, now I see in the properties panel, multiple objects are selected, right? because I didn't pre, uh, scope out the pre-selection filter just to select vias. However, I can use the post-selection filter to turn just on vias in here. All right, and now you'll see at the bottom of the properties panel, 29 of 31 objects are selected. You see with the lasso select feature, I'd accidentally selected a couple of other objects that are in there. However, I can scope those out just with that post selection filter. Okay, but always remember guys, if you're gonna use the pre-selection and the post selection filter, go back in there and turn everything else on and right click and clear filter. And I go back into the pre-selection filter as well and make sure everything else is on because that can really bite you okay later on okay if you don't turn everything on because you might try to select an, another object and you can't because the pre-selection filter doesn't allow it view fit board shortcut keys v f victor foxtrot all right now let me show you the best way to select objects at all completely here in the i'm going to select the panels button in the lower right of the status bar okay and then I'm going to click on PCB to open up the PCB panel. Now the PCB panel function is to select or highlight any object in the main editing area, okay? So what I'm going to do here is to scope out an object set at the top of the PCB panel. You see all these object sets in here? Well, right at the top is nets, okay? All right, let's take a look here. Um, their use, a uh, question came in. Okay, uh, let's take a look here. Um, there used to be a design sheet menu that allowed for setting up a sheet behind the board. Where has that gone? Okay, guys, that's in the view configuration panel. Look at this. Under system colors, you'll see that there's a sheet area color here. 
You see, I've turned that on right now, and that's linked up with my mechanical 16 layer. Okay? All right, now I don't have that mechanical 16 viewed right now. You'll see now I turn on all my mechanical layers, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna turn off that sheet for the time being, but just thought I'd answer a few questions. All right, another question came in. All right, uh, can lasso select items that are partially within the loop like a trace? No, the lasso select objects have to be completely enclosed within there, okay? All right, so, all right, so let's take a look and see what else we've got in here. All right, let's take a look back at the PCB panel. All right, so if I select nets up at the top here, I've got an uh, option to select a bunch of other classes, right? I, I've got an all nets class and a 12 mil net class as well, okay? So whenever I select a specific net class, all of the nets that are presented were in there. So if I select, for example, the five volt net, well, all of the primitive objects that make up that net are selected because I've got this select box checked up here. You see, if I didn't have that box checked, if I just click apply, now they're just highlighted and the other objects there are dimmed out. And I can control that background dimming with the open and close square bracket keys. And I'm gonna click clear. And there we have it. So when I have that select box checked, that's the key. And I select that five volt net. All of the primitive objects that make up that net are presented down in this lower area over here. All right. So for example, look at this. I see all of these object sets in here and I can sort on any one of them as well. So I have all of these tracks in here, for example. So all of a sudden, look at this, I can select all of the tracks on the bottom layer. And I can see, for example, I can select all of the tracks on the bottom layer that are five mils. So this is really, I think, the best way to select objects. Because when you select objects in the PCB panel, not only does it select it in the main editing area and then zoom into that main editing area, when it also selects them, it loads them into the properties panel. And I can see that I've got eight objects selected. The width is all at five mils so that now if I wanted to globally edit all of those tracks at once, bang, I should just type in 12, enter, and it's done. All right. So now I'm just going to hit control Z to un, yeah, but I have to click once in the main editing area for those shortcut keys to work. All right. So now that if I just hit control Z, it, it undoes that change that I just made there. So again, back in the PCB panel, you select nets, the net class you want, the net that you want, and it loads all of the primitive objects in there. Okay. All right, a question came in the chat window, but please put your questions into the question and answer window, please. What is the benefit of having two selection filters? Well, one of them is the pre-selection filter so that you can scope out the objects that you wanna select in the main editing area, or the post-selection filter means that you can select anything you want in the main editing area, but then scope out what you don't want to select. So. That's why that's called the pre-selection filter or the post-selection filter. Because Altium gives you many ways to do the same thing based on your own uh, preferences, okay? All right, so that's why I think the PCB panel is the best place to select any objects. And then there's a clear button at the top of the PCB filter panel. All right, so view, fit board. All right, so now I'll show you another panel that you can use to select objects. Back here, clicking on the panels button, PCB filter. The PCB filter panel, look at this. It loaded up the last query that I've used in here. And you see, Altium Designer employs a query language. 
for its design rules, which is based on a Delphi script object oriented language, but you don't need to know that language to create the design rules in Altium Designer, because there are some semi automated tools to help you out along the way there. So in the PCB filter panel, I'm just going to right uh, click here and say uncheck all and that removes any of these options that are in here. So if I wanted to make the same selection, I could go track of, of on a specific net, select the bottom layer, and then I could scope out a specific net. You'll see here it says end in any net. All right, I'm going to cut that right out and paste it at the end and backspace out of here and watch this when it says and in any net in, in net, I'm going to say. So now, I sel now I'll be presented with, when I put that open parentheses with a menu that shows me all of the net names. So I say and in net five volts. And now at this point, if I wanted to constrain it further, I can try to uh, add a query that says end certain mills, end as mills. Okay, and I could go in here, I could go five mills and put this in parentheses and hit enter. And it says, oh, error in the filter query. Okay, so let me try to put this in single quotes and hit apply to all you see it you have to it can be a little tricky if you don't know that specific query language so that's why selecting objects can be a little bit difficult in the pcb filter panel but wait there's more in the history panel here look it's got a history of every single a query that i've used before okay so, for example, in here, let me select this one here and apply expression, and there it is. So that's the actual query that's in there. Now, you don't need to know that query language necessarily, okay, because you'll see that that gets loaded in automatically, this query, when we select objects in the main editing area later with a feature called find similar objects, okay? So selecting objects in the PCB filter panel can be a little bit ch more challenging, but we have these helper and builder uh, legacy tools in here to help you build up a specific query in here, okay? So let's take a look at how we can also create a rule from there. This is one of the advantage of using that PCB filter panel, because at this point now I could say, all right, for this particular net on these bottom layer tracks, I could add a, a, a design rule in here. All right, so that's one of the advantages right there of selecting objects in the PCB filter panel. I'm just gonna delete this rule for now. All right, but just because it allows you to instantly create a design rule for those selected objects, okay? And there's always a, a, there's a clear button in here as well, okay? So we can right click or clear in the main editing area and then view fit board again. So the PCB filter panel, again, that allows us to select those objects and also create a rule for it. Now there's another option as well that we have the PCB list panel. All right, so it's got a lot of columns, so it's most effectively displayed horizontally, right? The criteria I use for docking a panel, if it's got more than say five columns, in that case, then I would dock it horizontally. In fact, in this case, the PCB list panel is so large that I, I usually bring it over on another monitor, okay? All right, so let's take a look. What we can do is set it the scoping mode to view or edit. So I'm gonna say edit all objects include only tracks. So look at this, look at all of these tracks, 8,505 tracks. Okay, I'm gonna sort it by net. You can sort on any column here. All right, and scroll up and down. Now I know, for example, if I was selecting tracks on the five volt net, that when I sort on these tracks alphabetically, all right, I can see there's the first five mil track with a 12 mil trace. 
All right, I can sort on the width as well because I know I'm looking in this case for five mil traces associated with that uh, with the net five volts. All right, so in this case here, I could use these this setting right in here to find all of these five mil traces. But you'll see once again, it's a little bit clumsier of an interface here. All right, now I just scrolled by it. But I see here's the first five mil trace on, uh, on the five volt net. And here's the second one. I can group select. These are all on the top layer though. Okay, so all right. So let's scroll up again. See, because I wanted the ones on the bottom layer. So as I'm scrolling up here, I'm looking now at the bottom layer traces here, over here on five volts. These are all these bottom layer traces. So you can see that it, again, it's just a little bit clumsier of an interface, right? Because now I can see that I'm scrolling up and down here. You know, it could be a little bit harder to find. So now I can sort on net. All right, so it takes a little bit more time to find these out. Okay, so here's my five volt trace. And let's see, I've got five volts on five mils on ground, five volts, five mil traces here. So you can see that it's a little bit clumsier interface. You know, I could sort on the width column and that's really the way to go here. All right, and then I just be in a situation where I'm scrolling up and down to where I'm just gonna try to find that specific five volt net with that, with that five mil trace in here. So it takes a little bit more time, right? Because there are just so many tracks in there, all right? So, oh, okay, now I found it, right? So I can hit shift click, select, right click, zoom selected and it brings me right in there and I could edit all of these traces at once and hit 12 and enter and then those those selected traces now instantly jump up to 12. So you see though it took me a little bit longer to find that but I could select it and edit it all at once in the PCB list panel. Now one advantage of editing any objects though in one of the panels is that you can instantly undo it. So if I hit just click once in the main editing area and control Z, I'll undo that, okay? So those are your options in the main editing area of selecting objects here of, in workspace panels. And then, you know, then they'll be presented to you in the main editing area. Now, if you wanted to, you could, of course, like I mentioned uh, in the slideshow, you could directly select those objects in the main editing area. So if I wanted to, I could just select that bottom layer. For example, I'm gonna shelve these polygons just to make it a little bit easier to show these, uh, this selection in here. So I select the bottom layer. I'm gonna zoom into this area. Remember, if you hit control click, you'll highlight a specific net and you can use that open and close square bracket keys control the background dimming. And that's the same thing as going to the uh, view configuration panel, view options settings and using this dimmed object slider, okay? All right, so if I wanted to select those objects in the main editing area, I could click on it in the main editing area right there. And if I hit the tab key, it's gonna select all the, those objects on that particular layer. Right click, clear filter, let's see it again, okay? So for example, if I right click on one of those traces and select find similar objects, all right, this little pop-up selection dialog box comes up because my cursor was over a few different objects. So I select this track and I could also scope this out. I wanna select all the tracks on the bottom layer that belong to the five volt net that are five mils in width. And look at this, at the bottom, I've got all of these boxes selected to select matched, clear any existing selections, open the properties panel right after, okay? And zoom into any matching and create expression will load up a query 
into the PCB filter panel. So I select those objects right there in the main editing area with the find similar objects. All right, now that they're selected, all right, I could edit all of them at once in the properties panel if I wanted to, okay? Right click, clear a filter, because remember, if I just select a track here and I hit tab, all right, it's going to select all of those connected objects here just on the bottom layer, but that includes this 12 mil track over here. So let's take a look at some of these other cool selection options as well, all right? S for select. Look at this physical connection single layer. Now if I click on this track here, check it out. It's selecting that connection, but it's also got that 12 mil track again. Let's see if we have any other options that present that pre uh, prevent that, okay? All right, so physical connection. Let's hit that uh, track again. All right, now it's gonna select everything that's connected in there, all right? Clear filter again. S for select. Hmm, look at this connected copper. All right, again, that's going to, if I select that track right there, bang, every selected object right there, okay? But, so just to select that one particular connection, though, S for select, all right, that physical connection, single layer, all right, that's going to just select those tracks that are on the bottom, okay? Now, if you want, again, you could just click on it there and hit the tab key and that's the same thing all right and remember you got to right click and clear filter all right now there's also a pre-selection filter look at this on the active bar this is its active bar at the top of the main editing area and it's in works in tandem with the pre-selection filter in the properties panel check this out if i'm in pop out mode here and you'll see if I just turn on, for example, vias, and I go to the active, active bar here, now you'll see vias is selected. If I go back to custom and I click in the main editing area, back in the panels, boom, it instantly updates. So the pre-selection filter and the active bar selection filter are synchronized, okay? They work together, okay? All right, so really that's the best way to select objects in the main editing area is that right click and then find similar objects, all right? Because if you weren't gonna do that, what you'd have to do basically is go in here. You could just hit shift click and select these different objects, okay? All right, a question came in. Why is that, what is that box up here whenever you go to select an object, okay? That's called, this box right here is called the pop-up selection dialog box. You see my cursor is over many different objects, right? Multiple objects, including this polygon core cutout. So Altium doesn't know what I want to select if my cursor is over multiple objects. You see, now what I've done is I just use shift click select those different track sections that are right in there. And now that they're all selected, if I wanted to, I could globally edit them all at once in there, okay? So that's how we select objects on the, in the main editing area. There are also some other really uh, handy options as well. For example, select all on layer. Look, I've selected the multi-layer tab down here at the bottom. Now if I select S for select Y all on layer, wow, all right, it's selected everything here that's on that multi-layer. And in the properties panel, we can see all the different objects that are selected. And most of the time, what I'm um, looking to select are vias, because vias and through-hole pads are on the um, multi-layer by default. And I can see now that I've set the post selection filter to vias that I've got 298 vias here selected. And it appears that there are 11 other objects on this uh, um, multi-layer objects. And if you wanted to see what those other selected objects were, well, let's take a look here. We could go to the PCB list panel and look at this, edit selected objects, display all objects. All right, so you'll see almost all of these are vias. I'm gonna select on the object kind and say, hey, what are those other objects that are in there? Oh, okay, there's a fill, there's a, re a region, there's some text. 
some free text. All right, so that's one of the other ways that you can uh, use those that post selection filter and the PCB list panel to help you examine those selected objects. And now I'm just going to right click and clear filter. And always remember to go back into the properties panel and make sure everything is on in the pre selection filter and the post selection filter. All right, so we've covered quite a bit on how to select objects in workspace panels in the main editing area and to use the properties panel pre selection filter to scope out the objects we want to select in the main editing area. Okay. All right, so let's take a look here at some uh, questions that came in here. All right, uh, let's take a look here. It looks like most of them are already answered. When you, a question came in, when you changed all five mil traces to 12 mil, will that change stay within the design rules or will I need to go and fix errors? Yeah, well, if you'd set a design rule that says that they have to be five mils and you change them to 10, when you run a design rule check, you'd see those violations. Or if you had online uh, design rule checking enabled, you'd see those flagged as a violation immediately, okay? Okay, guys, now it's time for a second poll question. I'm gonna open up this, uh, another poll question too on selection tools that you may be missing from other tools. I'm gonna to launch this polling question and please answer this polling question. I'll give you a minute to do that, okay? Okay, so again, the question is, do you know any convenient selection tools from other software that you miss in Altium Designer? And if you could, please add those software names and tools in chat. And it looks like those questions have been, that question has been answered by most of the folks in here. So I'm gonna end the polling on that question. Okay, a question came in here. When I select a component on the PCB and want to jump to the same component in the schematic, I know I can use cross probe, but it doesn't switch to the schematic and show the desired component. How can I use cross probe to zoom and select a schematic component from the PCB view? All right, you can use the cross select mode. All right. So let's take a look here at how we can do that. In fact, what I'll do is I'm going to show you a, a demo on cross probe and cross select mode uh, from the schematic and explain the differences. Okay. So for example, all right, mo now most of the time if I select components in the schematic and I want to select their corresponding footprints, that is usually because I'm going to be placing those footprints for the first time. So I've got a PCB here that's already got everything already placed. All right, but I'll show you uh, a couple of uh, tools on how you can use the cross probe and cross select. You see, I've got cross select mode enabled. I can see that there's a blue square around its option under the tools menu in the properties panel which I've got docked along the left. Look at this, I'm gonna turn everything off but components. And now here in the schematic, I'm just gonna draw a box around these components up at the top. There are 10 schematic components now selected. And now I see that in the PCB, those corresponding 10 footprints are selected right there. Now, if I was first placing footprints, what I could do is go to the menu bar, tools, component placement, reposition selected components. And each one of those footprints would snap to my cursor and I'd be placing them there, okay? All right, so that's how you can use cross select mode. Now watch this. I'm gonna just click in the main editing area to deselect everything and go back into the schematic and everything is deselected. All right, now watch this. Now if I just select on the, double click on this part to select it and shift click, so double click on D4, all right, let's take a look here. All right, for example, if I hit shift click, now these components are locked. So see, that's why I can't single collect, uh, click on a component. All right, so I have to double click on it. All right, now if I double click on that component to select it, now in the schematic, you'll see it's selected as well. See, so that's the key. If you wanted to select 
the PCB footprint and have its corresponding schematic components selected, you engage cross select mode and it works bi directionally. All right, so you can select the footprint first. You see, I've got nothing selected here now, nothing selected here now as well. All right, so for example, if I just double click to select C4, let me see if I double click to select here. All right. I, either one all right now d4 will be selected in the schematic as well now cross probe works a little differently watch this if i go to tools cross probe my cursor turns to a crosshair and all team designer expects me to just click on a part at the bottom of the status bar you'll see it says choose navigation point all right, so if I just click on a schematic part, bang, the PCB part flashes up at me for a moment. But if I wanna change focus to the PCB, I press control and then click on the schematic part. So now I jump the PCB editor and that corresponding footprint will be selected, okay? All right, so right click, clear filter, VF view fit board. Now back in the schematic editor, all right, if I want to select objects, you see it's a much more wide open area. All right, I'm just going to hit VD to view fit document and open up the navigator panel. You see now to select any wire or part in the schematic editor, I can open up the navigator panel and select this flattened hierarchy. So, because let's say, for example, you have 12 schematic pages and you want to find IC3, for example, okay? All right, well, you could scroll through here and select whatever part you want and it navigates right to it, okay? Right click, clear filter, VD, view fit document. Okay, um, some other questions that are coming in. All right, so let's see, why does this box appear when I try to select in the PCB main workspace? I think I know what you're talking about here. Let me give you an example. Let's just say if I select this via, you see that? If I go to click to select this via, is, uh, this is the, a pop-up selection box comes up because Altium doesn't know what you want to select because your cursor is over many different objects in here. All right, so this pop-up selection dialog box appears and then you'd say, all right, I want to select the via. All right, now, if you did want to select a via in the main editing area, don't click on it right in the middle because your cursor is over many objects, just click on the outer diameter of the via and now you'll select that, okay? So that's one way to do it. All right, another question, uh, why can't I select some things all of a sudden? I bet it's because in the properties panel, you have the pre-selection filter to some customized option. See that? Always set it back to all on, all right? Okay, other questions, lots of questions coming in. Um, and also, let, to let you know, my colleague David's going to be answering some of these questions as well, and for anything that might have to be taken offline, okay? All right, so why won't some parts be selected when I click once on them, but others will? All right, I bet it's because they're locked. For example, look, if I go to, like earlier, when I went to select any one of these parts just by clicking on them, I couldn't. I've got to double click on it. And now it's, you see that lock box checked right there? All right, so now if I unlock that part, you'll see that I'll be able to actually, then I'd be able to move it there. You just click on that lock box and now I can move it wherever I want. And now I can just single click on it, okay? So hopefully that answers your question. VF, view fit board. All right, more questions coming in here. Good stuff, okay? How come when I cross probe to a footprint, the designator is different than my schematic designator? Okay, I think I know what the problem is here. Uh, let me just close out all of these documents. I'm not gonna save any of these changes and collapse this project. And let me see if uh, I understand this properly with another example project. Watch this, I'm gonna go to file recent projects. All right, now this project, for example, look at this, it has many what are called device sheets on it which means this uh, sch schematics that have been reused in a, a, in a previous design. But the problem that that introduces is that you'll have many duplicate designators from the original schematic. See, take a look at this, for example. Look at this. 
There are two tabs at the bottom of the workspace in the schematic editor here, editor read only and accelerometer. And this has to do with the, uh, the names on those tabs are from the designator value for the top level sheet symbol here. You see this accelerometer? Control double click brings me into the lower level schematic where I've got these two tabs. You see editor read only when this schematic was originally made, hey, they made this U1. Okay, well, there's already a U1, all right, in this, uh, in another schematic. So they had to renumber these designators because Altium Designer requires a unique designator for each different part. So you'll see this accelerometer tab here has got a different designator, U3. Now this is called the Compiled Sheets tab, and this is going to be the instance on the PCB. You see the compiled sheets tab is gonna show you what's called the physical designator. Now watch this, either tab I select in the schematic editor, if I cross probe to this PCB footprint, it's gonna be U3, tools, cross probe, control, click, bang, U3. You'll see, okay, so that is why that the designator appears different in the PCB editor because they're showing what are called physical designators. If I right click and clear filter here and go into the properties panel, you'll see the designator display is set to physical by def uh, default because that's gonna be the instance of the designator on the PCB editor. It doesn't matter which tab I select here, the compiled sheets tab or the editor read only tab. When I cross probe, tools cross probe, bang. That's why the designator is different is because you're probably using a compiled, uh, uh, a what's called a device sheet on the top level schematic here, okay? All right, let's see what other questions are coming in here. All right, I've uh, answered quite a few of them. In the meantime, what I'm gonna do here is um, let's go back in here uh, and let's go to a, another polling question in here. Let me go through here just for a moment. And thanks again for watching. Let me uh, open up just a few more last poll questions as some of these questions are coming in. Here's a, a question here. What's your favorite new tool from this webinar? I'm gonna launch the polling in here for you guys and let you guys answer this question. If you would, please, I'll give you a minute. Okay, I'm gonna end the polling there for this particular question here. And let me uh, answer a couple of questions that came in here in the meantime, back in Altium Designer here. Let's say, is there a way to select multiple layers but not all for active selection? Okay, what, um, not exactly, uh, bec but what you can do, for example, all right, under, uh, let's take a look for snapping options, you can set it to all layers instead of current layers. But to select multiple layers for active selection, no, it's actually, I believe it's just restricted to uh, a spe the specific layer that you're on, okay? So I believe that's uh, done there. Let's see, um, some other questions that came in, is there a way to select and highlight a component by double clicking on it? and then selecting it in a small window uh, that also pops up. Yeah, that's the, the pop-up selection dialog box. Watch this. Under Tools, Preferences, you'll see Display Pop-up Selection Dialog Box. That's what comes up there. So for example, when my cursor's over many objects in here, Altium Designer doesn't know what I want to select. If I wanted that via or the polygon, just click on that object right there and that's how you'll select it right in there, okay? All right, so let's take a look at what else we have. What is the difference between union and room when grouping components? All right, a room is generated automatically for every schematic that has schematic parts on it, it's their corresponding footprints 
will be uh, a room will automatically be generated. You see that? A room in a component class. A union is a, a manually created group of objects. You just select a group of schematic parts or course or footprints, right click and create a union of them. And this way, when you select one, you select them all, okay? All right, so let's, uh, I've launched the uh, last polling question about how likely you are to recommend this as well. All right, now let's see, there's a question here, another question, there are times when it's hard to select a room when it's under a part, even when I have components turned off, okay? You should be able to easily select a room though just by, you know, uh, clicking on it, uh, but if you want, a lot of people only use rooms in, in a, what's called a, a multi-channel design, all right, where you can rubber stamp a room format, okay? All right, let's see. Are there any plans to add filtering to the PCB list panel? Well, I'm not sure what you mean by filtering, but you can certainly set the scope settings along the bottom, okay, underneath PCB list. Right, include all types of objects. Here, this is where you can display uh, just this specific option in here, okay? Any of those specific object sets in there, okay? All right, so let's take, I, I think that's about all there is here for, um, uh, for questions as well. One or two things came into the chat window which will resolve here offline, okay? All right, so let me get back into the slideshow. That's about it here, guys. Uh, again, any final questions, please use that Q&A window. And again, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. And remember, there will be a recording of this webinar that's uh, provided to you, uh, and it's gonna be uh, broadcast up on YouTube as well, okay? All right, everybody. Well, that's, a, that's gonna do it for this webinar. Thanks again for everybody for your questions and for your time watching uh, the efficient use of selection tools in Altium Designer. Thanks again, and hope everybody has a great day. Bye.